My name is Kyle Willis, and this is Marketing from the Roosevelt Room. Welcome to a new episode of Marketing from the Roosevelt Room. We are carrying on our series on my favorite cigar retailers and manufacturers, being able to hear from them some tips and tricks of what's really worked to be able to grow uh, their business uh, in, in store, uh, online, for manufacturers of uh, what, what it is they've been able to do to really build a presence with retailers uh, so well. And I'm really excited to carry our conversation today with Brett Fry, owner of Tobacology in Virginia. Brett, thank you so much for being with us today. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. I've been a fan of yours, a fan of the man with the beard. I think that uh, has been one of your icons since I jumped on uh, Facebook and got to know you. And I think, you know, one of the things that as we dig in a little bit here today is you've done a marvelous job of building that relationship with your customers. For those who may not even never been in your shop before, you know, I've never been to Tobacology, but I feel that sense of the family and community you've created. And I'm excited to hear a little bit today of just where that came from, well, what, what that natural flow was today. Before we jump into that, though, I always love to start off hearing a little bit of what I call the origin story. How did Brett get into cigars? How did you decide this is the career you want to make and uh, build a name for yourself in the cigar industry? Yeah, um, well, smoking cigars, uh, it's a... Uh, it's a lifestyle and I didn't enter that lifestyle very young. Um, I guess young. I mean, I was, I, I, I got stationed in, I, uh, uh, for deployment in Iraq and I was 21, 22 and, uh, it was a lot of high anxiety environment yeah. and we're over there. And, uh, I, I was in the corner one day with a buddy, we were smoking cigars and we're laughing and, and I, I, I forgot where I was. And for a brief, few moments to forget where you are in such a high anxiety environment it, hmm. it, it, it stuck with me and what I ended up doing was I remembered that I remembered yeah. that I remembered what it could do for me in such a in such a crazy environment uh, and I took that and and I, I filed that away and I thought to myself uh, over the next few years imagine what I could do for someone who is in a high anxiety environment at home or, yeah. you know, work, you know, they could uh, come in and I wanted to provide an environment where they could find that moment of, of relaxation, that moment of calm uh, in my shop. That's kind of, that's the, the cliff notes version, I guess you'd say of uh, the motivation behind opening I love up. That. I love that. First off, thank you for your service and that I don't take that for granted. And I know that's been something that's been dear to your heart and the way you work with organizations like Cigars for a Soldiers Operation. And, and uh, you know, Cigars for Warriors, correct? Is that the proper term? And so I, I count it greatly being able to work with you and, and know what you're doing uh, with that organization, the way you serve your community, uh, both on, on our homeland and afar. And, and you talk about that atmosphere where you're able to kind of escape from that anxiety, escape from what's going on in, in the day to day. And, you know, when you, when you look at that in regards to what you've created in the atmosphere for Topacology and Topacology Haymarket, uh, what were kind of the steps that you went into for being able to build that atmosphere in your own shop? So those who are dealing with some of those stresses of the day-to-day -day life can come into your shop and whether it be psychological and just the way you interact with people to the physical of your furniture in store, what were some of those elements for you that, that led to creating that atmosphere of, all right, let's escape some of those challenges and anxiety? Well, for me, I wanted to provide a place which, number one, that I was I would be comfortable with. Yeah. So I, a lot of times, let me preface all this by saying I'm not in this to 
to make a million dollars, you know, in a year. I'm in this. I wasn't replacing a huge income before I opened my shop. It was a reasonable income. I'm just in this because I truly enjoy what I do. Yeah. Um, that's kind of cliche, but I, I really enjoy some of the assholes that come into the shop. <laughs> and the characters and the, just interacting with, with people. Um, you know, I, I always say that we're uh, shop owners, tobacconists, we're stationary friends, right? There's someone where you know there's someone there. Yeah. And, and so they're there to, you can come. And, and I know a lot about uh, everyone's lives. So that being said, I wanted my shops to reflect life. And for me, that's comfort. That's, that's you know, your living room, your, I, I hate to say man cave because there are so many uh, great women in this industry, but that, that spot where you relax and, and do whatever, whatever it is that helps you relax. Some people yeah. it's, it's, it's watching sports. Others, it's just a quiet corner to, uh, to reflect, you know? So I, I try to create those places in, in my shop. Yeah. That, that, what I do and obviously space and and money is all a factor into how you do that you know so that was that there's really no massive mastermind game plan I just wanted to keep it comfortable and I wanted uh, people to be able to enjoy themselves I love that and I think that's that's huge because it's that aspect of you know first being able to think of all right what is it that the comforts you're looking for uh, and then being able to plan it out with the space you have that you know you've created both the, the physical space inside your shop as well as I know you create that space outside your shop when you do you, you know you put on some incredible events that aren't even related so much to the cigar manufacturers you bring in, the reps you bring in, but like the big boil you do every year. And, you know, I, I speak on this from someone who sees what you do online and says, man, if I'm ever going to plan a time to Virginia, I'm going during these events and you create, uh, you know, maybe for our listeners sake, tell a little bit of what the, the boil is and, and how you create an event for your community to come be a part of that cigars just happen to be a vehicle to bring everyone around. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was I was raised to give back, right? I mean, I, in in some form, and and that and that can be done in many ways. Uh, for me, it's bringing people together, feeding them, you know, providing that familial type of gathering, yeah, uh, the community type of gathering where you come together and you for you, you have fun, you enjoy yourselves, you support the business that's throwing it, um, but it's not necessarily. Uh, about one thing, you know, and, and in doing so, you try to raise money for uh, a, a good cause each time you do it, you know, and uh, the, the cause may change, uh, but the vehicle of the shop is, is always the same. Uh, as far as the boil goes, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a Yankee, you know, I'm, I'm from Pennsylvania, so I'm not a, a Southerner, you know, I'm, uh, I didn't have an attachment to, to crawfish or th- th- that type of eating, but I, I, I had an idea. And we, we rolled with it. Now, I've been blessed to be surrounded with a lot of people who can help me. You know, a buddy that comes in a shop, Randy Mathers, uh, owns his own uh, food food business on the side, yeah. right? His primary business. But we've been able to grow this uh, from the first the first time we did it, doing 75 pounds of crawfish. <laughs> now we have 500 pounds of crawfish and we put on <laughs> foil. Um, what we've done is we've ended up trying to keep it the same weekend in April. That way people can consistently mark their calendars. Like you said, uh, you know, I've been blessed with people on certain groups coming from Alaska to the event, you know, coming from, I mean, uh, two years ago, I think we had 17 states represented. Mm. Uh, but the, the big picture is just providing an opportunity for people to come together and uh, support good people, support a shop and congregate. I mean, that's what this is all about. You know, it's not about sitting by yourself in a corner. It can be. You yeah. Know, uh, you can use that, but for me, cigar cigar smoking is about coming together and, and meeting new people and in a in a manner which isn't so filled with hate, right? It's all about love. That's love for the for the leaf and love for the, the, the kinship that is cigar. Yeah. And yeah, I love that because you talk about 75 pounds or 500 pounds in that time of you created quite an event and that, that didn't happen in a vacuum that didn't happen overnight you know from one year to the next it was you spent a lot of time building that community and you talk about family I love that aspect of being able to create a family around the shop around the brand around the the atmosphere you you have there 
help me understand, you know, when I think about retailers who are listening to this that are just getting started and they're saying, all right, I want to be there one day. I want to have that place of, of being able to say I have a cigar family. And if, you know, I don't uh, help me understand if, if it's in your situation, did that predominantly begin with brick and mortar and the people that came in your shop? Did you start mainly online? What was your process to begin with creating and uh, on uh, a family and then you know from the online versus offline experience yeah, it's interesting um everything starts in your brick and mortar store so for me at least you yeah. know I, i'm blessed to have a great group of people that come into my shop and they're they they support me they show up uh and over the years they've they, they've learned how how it operates you know when when the deals can be. Now, that being said, we can always get better. And I'll tell you, I don't know if you've asked him, but the person you need on this is David Garofalo, man. He just wrote mm -hmm. that book. And that book is good, man. There aren't too many books as a retailer you can read, uh, but that, that book is good. I'm not going to plug it here because that's not what this is about, but I'll tell you what, that's a good book. Anyway, you just put yourself out there. You have to be willing to put yourself out there. And it, you, you, you're going to make mistakes. And you have to grow. And, and you said grow, and that's most important. Um, and you said not in a vacuum, but it feels like it's in a vacuum. Because <laughs> you're, you, if, if you truly consume yourself in the community that is your shop, yeah. and you're active, involved, and you listen, and you just try things. You have to be willing to try things. Uh, and sometimes you're going to fail. I've sure. done some crazy events, and, and some, sometimes people don't show up. You know, sometimes people, uh, sometimes, uh, some, sometimes people show up. Sometimes it catches. Sometimes it doesn't catch. You sure. know, I mean, we uh, we do a big Lebowski party, right? We've done it a few times. We dress up because there's there's a group of people that enjoy watching that movie. Now, is that for everybody? No, that's not for everybody. Sure. And we're not probably going to do it every year, but I've learned that we can't do that every year, right? So that might be in every two years, every three years, where we all dress up like characters and, we, and then we go bowling afterwards. There's no nice. you have to be willing to put yourself out there. Now, yeah. that being said, a lot of that comes with spending your profit. Right, so that's something to keep in mind. Again, I mentioned earlier, you, if you're in this for solely the bottom line, yeah. right, very difficult to try new things because when you try new things, you have to spend that money. And if you're willing to forego a little bit of profit to entertain people, to host people, just like you would at, at your house, the rewards are for me are exponential, yeah. right. And, and yes, there's always going to be people that just show up when you have barbecue. There's always going to be people yeah. that just show up for this. And you have to look past that. You have to, It's the same way that people are going to make fun of you for calling you, the people that come into your shop, your circle of family, right? Yeah. I mean, there's going to be shops. That's okay, though, because I'm, not, I'm doing me, right? And, and me works for me. And, and I sounds so cliche when i say it but it really is true you cannot worry about the people that aren't in the circle and and if you want to be in the circle everyone's welcome yeah that's the whole point the whole yeah. point of bar shops is everyone is welcome it doesn't matter where you who you are where you're from what your background is in shops it works come be a part of what we're doing and and if you have fun and you want to stay let us know you know if, if you enjoy something special let us know the feedback is huge but it all comes from putting yourself out there. Yeah. And, uh, you have to put yourself out there and try. And obviously, if you can make it fun, that that that's the uh, best way to do it. Yeah. And, and tell me, in you know, creating the events, creating those experiences, what role does listening to your customers play? You know, like Big Lebowski, was that your own idea, or, or the uh, Boyle, is that your own idea, or what, what role does it come to in creating that family, creating that uh, shared experience, being able to hear from customers, uh, and, and, and know when you should start asking about what do you guys want to see uh, from experiences or brands in the humidor, and be able to get that feedback from the family you're trying to build? You just squeeze. You just squeezed a lot of questions. <laughs> um, I, I have a but, tendency to do that. Sorry. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't do surveys, right? So I don't actually write down surveys and ask my customers. Here's here's what you are. If you're a shop owner that's in your shop and you own retail, you're going to work sixty to eighty hours a week. The majority of those are probably going to be in the shop itself. Yeah. Now you might 
you work in the register, but you're in the shop. You're involved in conversations. Things happen. You're, you're watching sports. You're watching TV. You know, the Big Lebowski comes on, and all of a sudden, three people stop com- conversing and start watching the TV. You pay attention. Yeah. To, uh, you know, you crack, you crack some jokes. Um, th- there's a lot of ways that while you're in that shop and you're being a part of your own community, there's a lot of opportunities that arise. And, yeah. and if you're paying attention and you're mindful and you kind of caress them into ideas, events, and that's all you do. That, that, that's all I've done. I, I don't say that's all you do. That, it, I, I'm making this sound so easy, and it's really not in the sense that you just have to be willing to put yourself out there and have some fun. Right? Yeah. You, have to be, you know, for me, silliness is, is fun. And when, when, when people participate with other people, it's not so silly anymore. Right. Then, then it becomes a thing. Um, as far as the crawfish goes, there was no, I actually can't even tell you whose idea it was. Hmm. I really don't know. I know who paid for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, 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 Absolutely. Who went on a limb and paid for it. And again, I've been blessed to have someone that I didn't have to go search for a cook. Yeah. Right. I, I was blessed to have a customer who was willing to grow in his abilities outside of his main job away yep. from his family you know sometimes he even includes his family but the the fact of the matter is i i've been blessed to have people that have grown with me and it's really become a thing I, cool. didn't, I didn't have to go out and search for who can cook who can cook 100 to 200 pounds of crawfish yeah. right that's big for me that was big because because to have to have grown or taught someone or paid full price for someone mm-hmm. to do that, it would have been very expensive. No, thank you. So I didn't have that. So as far as the crawfish goes, I have no idea whose idea it was. I just know who paid for it. No, you share, it. yeah. Yeah, I know you, you, you're hitting with resonate. I'm hearing that. And I think what I, what I love in that is, you know, speaking about Rainy for a moment, is, it was, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I have to imagine he didn't walk in your shop one day and say, hey, man, I'm a chef. Hey, man, I can, I can cook some crawfish for you. It's like you, as you're talking, you know, spending the 60 to 80 hours a week in your shop, got to know him and got to know who he was beyond just what cigar you smoke in today and got to know the personal side of, oh, as a hobby business, you are a chef as well. And that that's one of the things I've loved about you from the online experience is you've gotten to know me and connected with me uh, beyond just uh, the, the, all right, Kyle, here, uh, here's what I'm selling today. Uh, and, you know, when it comes to building that type of rapport with customers who are in the shop, who are customers online, is that, is that something you're just born with or is that a skill that can be developed? Ooh, he asked the former military recruiter. I don't <laughs> think that to a degree, interest, true and genuine interest in other human beings is, is, is something that some people have and some people don't. Now that, that being said, when I go home, I don't want to talk to anybody, right? Like, so I live, I try to live in the country so I don't have to deal with people because I deal with people all the time. So it's not, I'm not one of those people that always wants to know about yeah. everybody and everything. But if people seem genuine to me, yeah. if people seem interested in a lot of same things that I are, uh, I want to know more about them, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, on, on top of the customers, right? That's that's different because they're they're supporting me and and they're spending time here, and and I want to know about them and their lives because they might not necessarily be a a, a cigar or tobacco geek uh, and have that that interest like I am, but they're here supporting me. So that's a different type of interest in them. Online, a lot of people like yourself that I that I've tried to reach out to or help it's because I see they have they have a genuine interest in whether it be marketing or whether it be uh, cigars or whether it be retail whether it be manufacturing yeah. and I always want to help right yeah. I mean that that when I can and it can never hurt to know people right yeah. it can never hurt to develop relationships with with folks and you know all too often we we live inside of our phones and I you know, I fight that urge all the time but that's where great relationships now sometimes when you yeah. can't be face to face are formed. Um, and uh, you being in West West Coast, yeah. you know, it's easy because I'm up late, and for you it's like evening. So yeah. it's it's a great it's it's great because it gives me a little bit of time. But for me, as long as is we're interested in the same things, yes, there's a genuine desire to get to know you. You know, can I help this person? Can they help me? You know, it's not all selfless. Yeah. You know? 
sell fish. And, yeah. and I'm saying that. And I think that spurs the, the reaching out to people sometimes. Yeah. And, ha- you know, you talk about 60 to 80 hours a week in your shop, but not being glued to your phone at the same time. How do you balance creating that online presence uh, when you're spending so much time in your shop as, you know, I'll kind of give a little, a little more fodder to that. It's like one of the things I loved about you as I got online, of like, man, Brett is so readily available to converse and connect with people and, and build that relationship as, as, you know, I, I, I sadly joke about here in Seattle, we're such a hard state to be a cigar fan because of our, our laws that there are very few cigar shops that I think are really doing it well. Most of them are kind of those big chain ones. So I look to retailers that are doing it well, that aren't in my backyard, like Tobacology, to build that relationship with. How, how did that come about for you? Again, was that something that just kind of happened organically? You got in a group and became the go-to person? Uh, or what was kind of your, your process to build the rapport to become a go-to retailer in some of those Facebook cigar communities and online presence? A lot again, a lot of things all into one. That's what I do, man. I I I, I throw a shotgun at you, and you kind of right, pick what right, bullets you want to pick at. <laughs> uh, the first part was how how are you interacting? You know, for me, I have to. I'm I'm I make a commitment to try to answer immediately and concise. Yeah. So in other words, uh, it's if someone reaches out to you, I try to respond. It's uh, especially on the the Facebook page, and this is a really. And I'm going to get to the second part of that. The first part is Facebook times how long it takes us to respond on a Mm. business page. Okay. So number one, there's a bit of compulsiveness in me that hates when that number gets past an hour or hates when that number gets past two hours. Sometimes it does. Right. But I'm saying it's very difficult. It's also why, and this is, and, and this needs to be out there, right? And this is the first opportunity I've had and I've ever heard anybody say it. When you message me in a business, I have to get the last word. So even if that's a thumbs up, we can, we're going to go on a thumbs up battle about to, uh, forever. <laughs> I'm always a thumbs up. I have to, because it, it, what, what, and I don't think people understand this unless you own a page. I have to be the last because I have to have responded to you, yeah. right? For me, Part of that is I, I'm, I'm compulsive and I have to answer because I hate that going. Now, if you message me personally, it might actually take a little bit more time. But if you message a business, if you care and you're compulsive about the response rate, yeah. you're, you're going to get the response. But don't say, okay, thanks. And then when I thumbs up, you thumbs up back. <laughs> and guess what? And I'm going to continue this. You know? I'm saying this. I'm guessing I'm guessing you're saying this because it's happened before. <laughs> I'm just telling you, some people know this. I'm not going to name any names, Danny Vasquez, but some people know this. No, I'm just kidding. It, some people know this, and you have to. I, I have to get the last the last word because of the compulsiveness of the way the Facebook page works. Yeah. Uh, what was the second part of that question? Oh, the interest. Now, there's no real answer to this because in the end the answer to this there's only so many cigar groups right sure and you can't take over someone else's cigar group you can never and you never want to approach that in that manner here's here's what you can do you can be there when people need it whether that's information whether that's answers to questions, whether that's your thoughts on cigars, whether that's your thought on manufacturers, you can just be there. Uh, I have been blessed to be in a few groups that are smaller in stature, but they're very passionate groups. Yeah. Uh, you know, cigar lifestyle, cigar society. These are, um, you know, uh, cigar cartel. These are very, these are groups that are guys are guys and girls are passionate, right? Uh, they're passionate about it and they may not have a shop that's within 50 miles driving distance, right? A lot of people in this country don't have that access to retailers. And that's why online is, is always going to be a necessary evil uh, as, as, you know, coming from a retail, it's going to be a necessary evil because there aren't people who have access, but that doesn't mean that they can't benefit from having someone who does what we do yeah. 
is the uh, it's not just the the bringing of cigars to people it's the bringing of information to people it's it's developing the the trusting relationship between a customer and a retailer a customer and a tobacconist because a lot of these groups are not necessarily started by tobacconists they're started by people who are passionate about smoking cigars and there's a different way of looking at it in for me as a retailer that i try to bring to groups if i'm welcomed and and asked or if the opportunity presents itself i'm never going to dump truck and force my opinion or my thoughts on people but i'm going to be there you know if i'm wanted now even those those groups i mentioned there's groups that have that have branched off of that right and it's it's crazy when you when you stay in this online social media world how how groups branch off right you know c chat and i mean there's just different groups that 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 yeah. branch off to interpersonal issues between group members and admins, which is fine. For me, I, I, I don't, I, I can belong to a few groups, right? Yep, and I can totally. manage, and a lot of people are in the same groups. It's okay. But for me, here's what I will mention. And I think this needs to be said, and I don't want it to sound pretentious, but mm. I try not to be the same in every group. Mm. I'm the same person, but all too often you see cross posting, right? And cross posting is becoming a huge time waste for a lot of people. And it's actually what ends up making people leave groups, I do believe, is that, that they cross. What, what I really like people to see is if you're joining a group and you're a part of a group, develop a personality for that group. That's good. Right? And, and interact with that group in a different way than you interact with other groups. Because otherwise, all you're doing is just throwing that out there. That's and really good stuff. Not, not the interaction so for me uh, i pay attention to these groups i know i i once you're in there and you follow these groups and, and you tr you try to participate you learn the idiosyncrasies of each group why it was formed you know what they like or what they dislike uh for example you know some people like i mentioned don't like the whole familial reference right so you got to be mindful of that and not call someone a brother just because they're a brother of the leaf because that that, yeah. uh, that group doesn't appreciate that which is fine. It's not a big deal. Other groups, they're big about the familial aspect and they, they, they support each other like family. So it's okay to do that. Uh, for me, I think on the retailer side, the key is eventually you're going to have to find your own gift. Yeah. And, and I think that's key is, is it's hard to communicate and whether it be selling or not what you want in uh, someone else's vehicle, you have to eventually, uh, and not eventually it can be immediate, you have to form and grow your own vehicle. And I think if you can do that, that'll help you as a retailer from a retailer perspective in the end. Uh, you didn't ask me that. I know this was more about the interaction. of. No, this is good. This is good. Uh, but for me, it's just being genuine and being in, involved in that group because every group has its own idiosyncrasies and reasons why it's there. And people come to that group for a specific reason. Uh, and as long as you're not someone who just cross posts the same picture on 15 different groups, yeah, you're involved, right? Just be involved. And, 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 you know, some groups are about cars and cigars, right? So take your picture of a, of your cigar on the hood of your car, in front yeah. of your dad, whatever it may be. Other groups are, you know, it, it is what it is. So just paying, paying attention to the idiosyncrasies of each group and actively and genuinely being a part of that group. That's, that's the way I've, I've done. And you're right. It is, it's, it's been a blessing to have been able to connect with a few uh, groups so well. That's good. That's a very practical advice. I like that because especially that aspect of being one, of being, staying true to who you are, being, bringing that difference of, of your personality and character to the different groups you're in. I, I can tell you how many times I've gone and hid retailers and other members when they go and post the same stuff on every you know the 12 different groups i'm in I'm like come on man where's where's the there's creativity even, <laughs> there's even groups that make fun of those people which is great like i even oh. there's idiosyncrasies of a certain group that likes to laugh at cross posters and and eventually kicks them out because they're just cross posters yep oh yeah I love that. I'm 100 percent with you, and because it's void of the relationship, you know. When you think about uh, how you interact online versus offline, would I? When would that be natural? When would that be acceptable in in, in everyday life? If I was to walk up to 12 different conversations and say the same thing in every single one, then walk out as soon as I drop that comment, people are like. WTF, who was this dude? Where'd you go? What the hell? Where'd that come from? 
Well, and you know, it's the people that are the best, the most memorable, the most commented on, the most followed threads are all unique. And that's the key thing. And and I know it's it's strange, but to bring up, and I guess this is a might be a bad example because of the 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 essential uh, feminism feminist part of it. But Josh Bishop in Cigar Cartel, right? Like he's developed a way to post, and it's unique, yep. right? And it is and some of the I, most commented and interactive posts. Like I can appreciate that. And I get his might be inter- interacted for a different reason. Uh, <laughs> All folks, hail. <laughs> other folks, and, and it's not new, but other folks will ask questions, right? They'll ask what ifs, or they'll ask, you know, and questions of the day or questions of the week. Sure. And those are the most interactive. And that should show you, it's not the person who cross posts the picture of, of his cigar, you know? But it's funny because if you watch, there are people who post with, they sit on their porch all the time and they smoke, and there's a fucking wooden owl right? <laughs> he posts his owl and he hasn't got a name for this owl and that's good shit right yeah, like yeah like it, 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 i say shit literally he named him shitty but <laughs> it's good Perfect. because it's unique and that's him and for me that's what this is about earlier when i referenced the assholes that come in the shop because i i i say that in in jest and in a familial way because that's what makes of our yeah. smoke so awesome absolutely relate to groups and show their uniqueness now if you just post the same picture in 15 groups what is unique are you just posting it out there right i mean do you really know who's in that group no and if you do do those people really mm. just want to see that just like the same people want to see the same picture in the other group and it's really being a part of a group and the people who be a part of a group and they take ownership in that group and they you can tell it's unique man and it shows and that's really kind of who we are as a cigar shop right if you think about it i mean we do us and we want to be a part of our silly stupid fun familiar nature but if you don't that's fine if not we'd hope you still come in to buy your cigars because you know we got a great door you know and and we keep it in great shape and we we partner with great brands and we try to unique stuff so it, it, at the very least we hope you come in for that but we hope that you want to be a part of what it what it is to back all of it because that's us it's the same as the people who post uniquely in different groups they are themselves and and they don't sacrifice just they don't post just to post yeah right they don't post for for attention they post for interaction Ooh, that's a good one they don't post <laughs> They post for interaction. Ooh, <laughs> like a tagline about that. That's a good I was just say, <laughs> uh, but it's true. They post for interaction, not not just for the attention. That's good stuff. And you know, I'm going to shift a little bit, um, but I think it, it relates very much to that aspect of interaction instead of attention. Because on, on our first episode, we had Danny Vasquez as being able to speak from a manufacturer perspective of building uh, uh, the re- uh, relationship for retailers and reps. And in that, Danny highlighted you as one of the retailers who's doing it well. And be able to talk about the relationship that Romacraft has been able to build with Tobacology. Uh, for those who don't know, you guys just got a shop exclusive that sold out instantly. And that didn't happen overnight as well. It was a lot of that interaction, a lot of that relationship that you and Danny have had. And and I know that you have that type of relationship with other reps as well. Danny spoke, gave us some great insights for how retailers can work with reps from his perspective as a rep. I'd love to hear from you as a retailer, what are some... What are some tips and insights you have of what's been able to work for you to build good rapport with your reps? Well, there's some similarities to the to the whole group, the, the whole yeah. online thing, in the sense that every group is different. Every manufacturer is different, okay? And, and I know we're talking about Danny, but you got to you have to go you have to go up that chain a little bit to understand, yep. truly understand, right? I mean, I've sat on Skip Martin's porch in Esteli. Right, I understand how he thinks. No, I, hold on, I don't want to say that in a pretentious manner. I have come to know Skip Martin's belief in why he does what he does and how he does it. Sure. At least understanding, not to know. And he's he's a they're a fascinating, fascinating company, man. And it, once you know the background and you know where he comes from and and you know 
what his motivations are, it's easier to understand. Because let me tell you something. When I first started carrying Romacraft back from the 2013 or 2014 tweet up here around this area, I didn't carry it right, right? I didn't I, I didn't know how to order from Romacraft. I didn't know that I, that that they make so many of this. And it. I thought it was – I it, my immediate assumption was there's a big warehouse with a lot of cigars in it that I yeah. can just order time right and and that's that's not always the case and it took me a while to learn that now i've been blessed with them romacraft hiring some really cool people uh at, you know danny and now sean and john oliver they're people that that, that I've, I've come to know and uh it helps me develop to, to further that relationship with them but the key is just when you get these opportunities i.e ipcpr i.e taking a trip to the headquarters i.e visiting Nicaragua or Dominican Republic, take an opportunity if you can get it to, to, to know them, to learn, to learn who they are. Now it's a lot easier with a smaller company, right? Yeah. And that's the blessing in my eyes of what this industry is about is the, it's just guys making cigars and it's really yeah. neat to get, to get to know them. But for me, it's just don't, if you really care about a brand and, you, and you're digging it and you're supporting them, and they're they're making they're helping you make money because in the end that's what they're doing right yeah. I mean these guys are making kick-ass cigars and they're good and and a lot of what they make is good it's not just one cigar they make is great they make a lot of good cigars I want to know what this motivation is right I yeah. want is it the factory I want to stop by and and know who's blending right I want to meet Esteban you know and then I want to know yeah. where it came from right and and it's just truly buying in and supporting these guys is it's just like the Facebook groups, right? Yeah. Are you just there to buy cigars from them or, or do you really want to, you know, are you digging what they're selling, man? You know, and I'm yeah. digging what Romocraft is selling and they're surrounding themselves with good people. And that's usually a sign, right? I mean, that's usually a sign that they're doing things right. Uh, people are surrounding themselves with people that make them better. Yeah. That's what Crap. That's what Mike and that's what Skip are doing. They're surrounding themselves. You know, in the beginning it was family, right? They were surrounding themselves with family, and yeah. now they've they've stepped away and they're they're really hiring some cool, cool people. And I don't know, I get along with them. I love and it. Okay, it is, but you got to be genuine. Again, it comes back to being genuine. Uh, that's good stuff. And I, I like what you had to say there. You know, hey, first off, I didn't I didn't do it right. You know, they, you're talking about how you. you got to know the brand in a different way. So I'd love to carry on that from a, uh, a little, little deeper and speaking hypothetically for a moment. If you were to start from ground zero, but knowing what you know today, what are some lessons learned that impact how you would start something new? What, what are some of those, hey, I would not do this again, I would do this differently uh, to, to getting a, a brick and mortar off the ground? First off, if you want to start a shop and you, you're truly into it and, and, and you have a little bit of time, you can come hang out with me, right? That's cool. like, because if you really want to know how shitty it is, come <laughs> 60, 60 to 80 hours a week, just away from your family, keeping the shop open and, and making it run. You can come, you come and hang out. All jokes aside, I would visit shops. You have to visit shops. You have to see how people do it. I always thought that if I could go back, uh, but I come from a sales background, so that's where this comes from. That's if good, I yeah. could go, I would probably be a cigar rep or a cigar broker before because there aren't anybody in this country who have been into more shops than mm -hmm. cigar salesmen, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're a cigar salesman, you go into shops and you meet all the alphas and you meet the the – the, the people who are doing this as a side gig, you meet the people who aren't even in their shops, right? They just hire people to run their shops. Yeah. You meet people who care. You meet the people who don't give a shit. And for me, you learn. And that's again, why that book written by our, uh, our boy up North. Is, Please mention that. I'll, I'll be happily to include that in the notes. Yep. It, it's a great, it's a great book, but either way, it, you have to learn from people that have done this and, and, at, and then what you can do with that information is you can develop how you want to do it. Uh, and I visited a lot of shops. I used to work for, for, for some shops uh, in the area. And it's all about just gathering information, yeah. figuring out how you want to do it, and then being willing to make mistakes. Again, I yeah. must say, 
You have to be okay with making mistakes. And as long as you're honest and you're genuine and you admit it, you'll have no problem, even if you make mistakes, to to re reevaluate uh, relationships and, and build them back if for some reason it's it's harmed by your mistake. Sure, sure. Well, that's good stuff, man. I really appreciate that insight. I love to bring it home with kind of just a few uh, fireball questions thrown at you, learn a little bit more about you uh, and, and wrap it up in kind of a fun way. Can you remember what the first cigar was you ever smoked? I cannot. You know, <laughs> it, being, being, be, being a tobacconist and someone who w- it would try to give a million people their first cigar, it's almost comical that I legitimately cannot remember my first cigar. No. My first cigar probably uh, was something like a Backwoods, right? Okay. It was probably something like that. It was not a premium cigar. Yeah. Uh, it was It was most likely a uh, machine made. And then I, it just it just kind of evolved from there, right? Uh, I, I I never got into infused cigars. However, yeah. I see their value with with putting the needle in the vein, so to speak, of this sure. of what we do. But for the most part, it really just kind of it just kind of transformed and happened. But I cannot <laughs> nail down the exact uh, gotcha moment. Yeah. I'll tell you my story then and why I'm grateful for tobacconists like you. Uh, My first cigar was in 2007. I was working at a startup social media company and we had just launched a new version of the platform we were building. We were trying, this is like before Facebook became who Facebook is today. MySpace was still a juggernaut. Facebook was still college email only. And the boss uh, asked me and one of our lead developers to go buy a box of cigars so we could celebrate. And I came from a very conservative household where cigars were basically, you know, gateway to hell. And it was, don't don't smoke tobacco. Don't smoke uh, anything. It's it's bad stuff. But I was like, well, hey. I was I was raised by Nancy Reagan as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so oh yeah, so I I knew nothing, right? And so we went into one of those uh, you know chain cigar stores, bought a box of Macanudo Hyde Park. You know, probably cheapest box they had available for us there. And nothing against Macanudo, but it was that you know big brand new you don't really know what you're getting into smoke that and thankfully it was a really enjoyable experience i was like man i I really like this it was smooth thankfully someone uh there with us was a little more educated to tell me not to inhale and i said i want to know a little bit more about this uh and i'm a bit more of a collector personality so i said well i want to go get my own humidor i want to get my own cigar set now and uh you know, was stuck on the Cigar International samplers that didn't really know what I was buying, but it was a good deal. And it wasn't until I met some good tobacconists who could say, hey, Kyle, there's a lot more out there uh, in the boutique world and even in the big brand world to give you kind of that smoother, richer experience. And so I have such a love for those retailers who are helping educate the cigar fan to say, all right, I'm just getting started. Help me have a better experience than a backwoods or something that's kind of more mass produced. So uh, thank you for helping people like me have a a much stronger first experience. Well, I think, uh, you know, not to to get on my activist soapbox, but that's, that's the problem we're, we're, we're going to have with the the main problem we're going to have with the smoking age being raised from 18 to 21 in a lot of these states. Right, it's not so much teen, nineteen, twenty-year-olds have an extensive discretionary income to spend with us, yeah. but it's more along the lines of that I can't reach them and I can't educate them on the how awesome lifestyle is, and I can't get them started correctly, so that as they grow and they, and they grow uh, personally and professionally, they make more money and they have discretionary income. I can't help guide that, and that's yeah. where the as adults. You know, I'm not saying I want to do this to 16 year olds. I'm merely saying that 18 to 21 as an adult, it, that's the worst part of, of that. Mm-hmm. And that's, uh, I don't think we're going to change that. You know, I, I think that before long, it'll, it'll, it'll get to 21. But at one point, folks could drink when they were 18, right? So, who, I mean, yeah. if you look at, if you truly are a, a, a student of history, you, you know that nothing is really permanent and, sure. and, and it comes and goes. Uh, other than taxes, taxes <laughs> valid. Death and taxes. You guys rely on those. There's no, uh, no, uh, 
Yeah. Well, tell me this then, and this may be uh, another question that's harder to answer, but if you can come up with one or two, I can accept. If you were stuck on a desert island, could only bring one box of cigars with you, can you tell me what that would be? Mm. I think that the answer to this question, at least for me, has changed over the years, right? Okay. Because more people are making are, are making cigars and they're aging differently. So I'm going to give a few answers, right? I'm going to give a few of, of what were my top ones when, I, when I've been asked this question over the past decade or 15 sure. years. Uh, at, at, at one point, uh, if I'm going to go Cuban, I think a aged Bolivar Bellicosafina mm -hmm. is probably one of the better Cubans I've ever had. Aged, right? At least three to four years. Cigars that I've, that I've had in my life that have been up there recently, right? The Romacraft Sabretooth. I'm an Aquitaine fan. So my first choice would be the Anthropology because I like the Vitola, yeah. right? So if is listening and ever makes me a, a Anthropology Sabretooth, I would love that shit. Uh, but I, I really like that cigar. But in the past, right? The Balmoral 18 year, right? Yeah. And a lot of people know about this. I'm thankful for that because I was able to do a little bit of collecting before, uh, before some folks realized, but that to me, uh, Ball Moral is a company that, that if you are not, have not inter been introduced to Ball Moral, you need to find mm. some, right? The, the new Connecticut came out last year is great. I'm excited for some of the stuff they're bringing out. Uh, but that Ball Moral 18 years one, uh, the original Cuenca Y Blanco, right? Also known as the CYB when it was rebranded. To me, that aged is one heck of a cigar, but mm. again, they got it in the lawn sale. Yeah. So that that would be my, my my cigar. You know, I've had a, a lot of cigars, but those are some of the more recent. That and it's changed over the years. Uh, obviously, Oscar's making some great stuff. Oscar makes my house cigar. Yeah. Uh, that right now is all. If I'm ever gonna give that answer, and it's gonna be honest because it means more than one thing, it's gonna be my house cigar by Oscar. Absolutely. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of people making great cigars, and that's the beauty of it. Is I'm not in love with with one cigar and only one cigar. Uh, yeah. I've given these just to play the game, but in the end, my mood dictates, right? What Got I'm it. drinking, what I'm, where I'm at, it all dictates what I want to smoke. Uh, and, you know, on a desert island, I don't think I'm going to go heavy, right? So <laughs> in the end, it, 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 that the environment, right? If I'm stuck on an island with Johnny Depp, it, there's going to be a lot of rum, right? <laughs> rum, that's going to change, right? If there's no rum, then that's going to change what I smoke. So for me, it's it's not just it, – there's no one answer. It's a lot okay. of different cigars. It's going to depend on where I'm at, what I'm at. That's the beauty of what we do, man. Yeah. There's not one cigar that's the, the answer to everything. There's no one cigar, and that's what I love about it. Yeah, I love it. Well, Brian, I think you've given us a lot of great – insights and, and practical opportunity to be able to build greater interaction than just attention with our customer base with, as a retailer, uh, building that presence both in shop and online. For those who are around Virginia and come visit you in person, uh, tell us where they can find Tobacology and, and come meet the man with the illustrious beard. <laughs> Sure. My, uh, uh, my original shop is in Manassas, Virginia. So if you're ever in the area, either visiting D.C. or visiting the battlefields, whatever you've been uh, in the area for, we have one in Manassas. You can, all you got to do is do a Google search. No one's going to remember the address. And then we have another <laughs> market, which is just uh, basically a town or two over. Uh, mm -hmm. It's right off 66, so it's, it's a little bit easier and quicker to get to if you're coming from D.C. It's a Haymarket location. Uh, but either way, uh, we, we'd love to have you. You know, we're open seven days a week, usually from 12 to 10. Some days we close at 8. And who knows, that might change. But either yeah. way, find us, do a, do a search, go find us on social media, uh, and uh, we'll go from there. And for those that aren't able to come in store but want to build that connection, you talked about, you know, being able to build that presence online, creating your own group. Uh, what is the best way for people to interact with you? Is it through sure. a Facebook group or one-on-one -on -one directly? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and again, what I do, there's a lot of vehicles, right? We have a text club. We have an email list. We have, we have a lot of ways. But uh, for folks that aren't near us, just go on Facebook, connect, and follow the pages, Tobacology, Tobacology Haymarket. Our sales group is called Tobacology Worldwide. So uh, you can uh, you could request to join there, and we'll uh, we'll do a little bit of Facebook stalking, and then we'll approve you. 
but uh, either way, we'd, we'd love to have you be a part of what we're doing. Awesome. Brett, thank you for your time. It's been a true honor and privilege having you with us here today. Thanks, man. Hey, I want to thank you very much for joining us for this episode of Marketing from the Roosevelt Room. I know you have a lot of options on what podcasts you can listen to. So thank you sincerely for taking the time to join us for this one. If you have enjoyed this conversation, we'd love to keep it going in our Facebook group, Marketing from the Roosevelt Room with Kyle Willis. In that, we have live video, Q&A, and create more of a dialogue. We'd love to keep the conversation going. So please join us on Facebook. Otherwise, look forward to catching you on our next episode. Have a great day.